viewers and welcome to a new live class. It's been a long time uh, since the last one. So welcome back to these live uh, classes and we are back with Renewed Energies. So today we are going with live class number 127 and we are going to see a little bit about omnidirectional navigation in ROS2. So let's go for it. to live classes it's been uh, a long time since the last one i have missed you all a lot but uh, yeah we are back we are back uh, stronger with live classes so as i have just said today we are going to be checking a little bit on navigation too and uh, uh, specifically we are going to see how to configure and uh, which are the things to take into account when working with an omnidirectional robot all right so yeah well let's not lose any more time and let's go uh, to work so i'm going to change right now my screen here let me uh, uh, change it uh, here there you go you should be seeing now my computer screen which i am sharing then uh, as always uh, remember that okay i cannot see let me see okay yeah so uh, remember that uh, you are going to be able to see here uh, we have the live streaming for this live class so remember that the first thing you need to do is to click on this button here which says fork and open the class project okay very important to click on this button because this is going to uh, copy to your workspace the project that we are going to be using uh, in today's live class all right you need this project so that you can work and practice everything that i'm going to be doing so um so yeah let's click on this button here i'm going to click it myself and this is going to take me directly to the project for today's live class so so yeah hopefully uh, you already are uh, inside this is going to basically as you're going to see now it's going to take me directly to the project uh, page and uh, in the same project page we are going to be able to, to see the streaming you are also going to have there the chat available so 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 in case you have any doubt any problem don't hesitate to put it down in the in the project okay mine is not loading for some reason hmm. let's wait a little bit maybe it's just taking uh, some time if not i will open it from here which i already have it uh, from here also Yeah, I think I'm going to go straight for that because I don't know why it's not opening here. Okay, let me open it directly from here. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right, so yeah, as you can see here, I have all my uh, streaming uh, section. I'm going to mute myself. So here you're going to be able to, to, to see the streaming live. You can, uh, you can minimize it if you don't want it. You can make it bigger. You can move it to a new screen, whatever you want, the setup uh, which is better for you, that you, like, uh, that you like the most, you can go for it. All right, here I have uh, the live chat, which I can see that no messages for now. Hmm. So if you are around here, uh, write something in the, in the chat so that I can see that everything is I'm going to write something myself. Hello there. Okay, I can see there Alexander is saying hello. Okay, great, great. So I can see that uh, the chat is working. All right, so as soon as you have the project open it, you are going to see that you have this 
Jupyter Notebook here, which says Rust Developers Life Class number 127, okay? This is the notebook that you should have for this project, and this is the notebook that we are going to be following today, all right? So, um, yeah, so far so good. Let me know if you have reached this point, if you have the project opened with the notebook, the proper notebook, this one for the Rust Developers Life Class number 127. You have this uh, opened and uh, everything loaded properly, yeah? Let me know here, please. Everything loaded, okay. Okay, excellent. So, yeah, then let's go for it. Let's not lose any more time. Then uh, let's start setting up everything. So, as always, these live classes are not to have you uh, there sitting uh, in your sofas while you are listening and watching what I'm doing. No, no, that, that's not what uh, a live class is supposed uh, to be. So basically I want you to practice with me, all right? I want you to learn by doing. So I'm going to be, um, basically I'm going to be doing things here. Actually it's not uh, so much of an explanation and theory as you're going to see here. There's not so much explanation and theory, but basically it's practice, 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 okay? So I want you to, uh, while you are listening and watching to what, what I am doing, since you have the project open here, you are going to be able to do exactly uh, the same that I am doing at the same time, okay? So while you are following the live class, you are practicing in the same time. This is the way that uh, we think uh, that uh, the teaching method is most efficient, which is to, to basically to, to teach um, to teach by doing or to learn by doing, all right? So yeah, let's go for it. Then we are going to go uh, straight to the point and we're going to start launching our simulation, all right? So we are going to be working with a gazebo simulation where we are going to be testing uh, all the navigation to uh, setup, etc. So let's start. First thing is going to be to open a new shell, okay? So this is the ROSDS environment. And here you have several options that you can uh, open. So the first one is the web shells, all right? So by clicking here, this is going to open a new uh, shell, which basically is just a regular Linux shell. You can open as many as you want. Uh, you can have uh, different uh, shells here. Okay, so this basically your, uh, works just like a regular uh, Ubuntu Linux shell, where you can type uh, commands, all right? So uh, first thing is to open this uh, web shell and then once it is opened, we are going to run these two commands in this shell. So first I'm going to run this command. I'm going to copy it directly here from the notebook with control C and paste it here directly to the, to the web shell. So I'm going to run this command, which basically what I'm doing here is to source my uh, simulation workspace which is the workspace where I have all the simulation related packages. I'm going to source my workspace and then I'm going to run this command. Rush to launch neo simulation to and simulation.launch.py. This is the command that uh, basically is going to launch my Gazebo simulation. So let me run it. Okay, this is going to start showing some logs as you are going to see. Probably we are going to see some errors. Don't worry. Don't worry since uh, think it's uh, working properly. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is to open the uh, Gazebo client in order to be able to see the simulation. So for this, we are going to click on this cube-like icon that we have here. You can see the image here in the notebook as well. So by clicking on this icon, this Gazebo window is going, is going to pop up, okay? Here I have it. And here I'm going to be able to see the simulation, okay? So you are going to see this simulation of this environment here. Let me zoom a little bit out. Let me make this bigger also. All right, Whoop. move it too fast. Okay, so here I have this environment with the MPO500 robot here in the center. As you can see, I have my MPO500, which is an omnidirectional robot, 
as you can see, with two laser mounted, etc. Very, very cool robot. And it's going to be spawned in this environment here, also. All right, so here we have our gazebo simulation loaded. Excellent. Then, um, yeah, so, so far, so good. First step done. Yeah, H have you been able to launch the simulation properly? Let me close here. Yeah, so far so good. Have you been able to properly load the Gazebo simulation? Looking good. Okay, great. Let me let me very quickly uh, tell you that uh, in this button here, the second one. So remember that the first one. Sorry, let me close this. There we go. So remember uh, the first one is where we launched the web shell. And the second one, it contains the IDE or code editor, as you can see uh, here. So if we open this, it's going to open our um, integrated development environment, code editor also. Here we have it, where we are going to be able to access all our workspaces that we, get, we have here. This is basically the one we have sourced, where we have our uh, code for this project here in the Neo Simulation 2 package, okay? So this is uh, only a way of being able to visualize in a graphical way all the folders and files that I have in this project, okay? So uh, if I open a shell, for instance, here, and I do an ls command, I'm going to see the, all these workspaces. AI workspace, Calkin workspace, simulation workspace, etc. So here, I can see the same, but in a graphical way, which is going to allow me to uh, work with files in a um, more user-friendly user uh, way, right? So uh, basically, the, if we open here the Neo Simulation 2 package that you are going to find here, inside the launch file, we have the simulation.launch.py file. Okay, this simulation.launch.py file is that file that we have launch it here in order to start the simulation. Yeah? ROS2 launch from the Neo Simulation 2 package, we have launched this simulation.launch.py. So uh, using the IDE, we can open this file and see the contents that uh, they are inside it. You can have a look if you want. And uh, just to let you know that here at the top of the file, you have these two um, variables, my Neo robot and my Neo environment, okay? So by changing these uh, values, you can change the type of robot that is spawned and in which world is spawned, okay? So in this case, as you can see, we are loading the MPO 500, but here inside the robots folder in the same Neo simulation to package, here inside the robots folder, you are going to see the different options. So we have the MP400 and MP500, which are are regular uh, differential robots. And then we also have this uh, MPO500 and MPO700, which are omnidirectional, okay? So by changing this parameter, you can change the robot to spawn. So uh, yeah, later after this live class, since you are going to keep this project forever in your workspace, you can open it whenever you want and you can experiment with different robots, etc., etc. okay? And same applies with the my new environment variable, so here I am loading the Neo Track 1, which is this specific world that you can see here, okay? It's this world, but by changing this uh, variable here also, you can load different worlds. Basically, you have the list here. Yeah? You have the AWS, Neo Track 1, Neo Track 2, and Neo Workshop. So by changing this parameter, you are going to be able also to change the environment, the world, where your robot is going to spawn, okay? So this is going to, uh, I'm just explaining you this so that after the live class, you can uh, keep working on this project and do, doing your own experiments with navigation too, adapting it to different worlds, different robots, etc. all right? Okay, then let's keep uh, going with the matter of this class. 
So next thing I'm going to do is to actually launch navigation tool, okay? So now I have my uh, robot here uh, loaded, but now I want to run navigation tool in order to uh, be able to uh, send goals to my robot and uh, have my robot autonomously navigate towards these goals that I uh, set, all right? So for this, let's open another shell. Here I have another one. Yeah, so in one, I have the simulation opened, and in a new one, I'm going to run these commands again. So again, I need to source my workspace, and then I'm going to run this command here, which says ROS2 launch Neo Simulation 2 navigation.launch.py. Okay, so here I'm uh, launching other things. We will have a look at this launch file in a moment. So for now, I'm just going to run it, okay? There we go. All right, so as you can see here, it's launching some things. Then uh, at some point, here it's still launching, launching things. After some, some seconds, you are going to see this message. See here? It's saying AMCL cannot publish a post or update the transform. Please set the initial post. See this log message here, which I have, uh, you can see this log message here in the notebook also. And so here is going to, uh, you are going to, uh, once you launch this command, you are going to start getting these messages here in the shell, okay? so. At this point, if we have a look at the message, it, it's actually saying, AMCL cannot publish a post or update the transform. Please set the initial post. Okay, so basically it's telling, it's telling uh, this message is uh, telling to us what to do. So uh, we have to set the initial post of the robot, right? Okay, so let's go to RVs and uh, do this. Then in order to uh, be able to visualize RVs, we are going to click on the graphical tools button. This uh, icon here, which looks like a super old computer, we are going to click on it, and it's going to show us uh, RVs, okay? You can double click here in order to maximize it. There we go. Then you are going to see something uh, like this, okay? This, you are going to see this map with these uh, transforms in the center. So basically here, what we need to do is to set the initial position of the robot. And we are going to do this by using the 2D pose estimate tool, okay? Yeah, we are going to use this 2D pose estimate tool in order to set the initial position of our, our robot. You can see here in this GIF how to do it. So if I come to the simulation, I can see that the robot actually is here in the center right in front of this ball right here. So I can tell that the robot is here, more or less, yeah? So I'm going to set here the initial position. Let me do it. Okay, and as soon as I uh, do it, I'm going to see that all the filter points appear here, also my um, uh, the cost maps are appearing here, as you can see. Yeah, so basically everything is getting uh, initialized. Also, you are going to see here that navigation and localization are set to active, okay? So at this point, also you are going to see that in the shell, these warning messages are not showing anymore, okay? So it has basically uh, finished initializing everything. All right. So at this point, basically I have a uh, navigation uh, already uh, set up and running and I am able to send goals to the robot. So at this point I can already uh, send a goal to the robot. So, so yeah, let me do it. By the way, let me tell you that uh, you can if you want, because here we are not seeing the robot itself. So we are basically seeing only the footprint. So we can uh, we can try to load here the um, robot model, 
by adding a robot model uh, visualization here. And then let's come here. And I'm going to change the description source from topic to file. There we go. And then in the description file, I can set here. Let me look for the uh, proper file. So see, Neo Simulation 2. Um, this is in robots, MPO 500. MPO 500 URDF. Okay, so this should work. See? Okay, great. So now here we can see in RVs the um, MPO robot. Okay, here we have it, which is. Uh, There we go. Oop. Okay, so yeah, here I have a navigation setup with my MPO robot here in the center. And now I enable, uh, as I have said, now uh, the system is ready to receive uh, navigation goals. So in order to, to, to give a goal to my robot, as indicated in the notebook also, we can, uh, well, we can send goals to the robot in many ways. In this case, the, the fastest one and easiest one is to use the 2D goal pose, which here it's uh, nav to goal, okay? Using this tool, I can set here in Airbus directly a goal to my robot. So for instance, I'm going to set uh, a goal around here. And as soon as I set it, I'm going to see the path computed as you can see, and how the robot starts navigating towards that goal. Yeah, here in Airbus, and if you go to the simulation, you are going to see also the robot going towards this goal. Yeah, here we have it. So yeah, we have uh, basically started uh, navigation too, and uh, we are right now sending goals to to the robot and we can see how the robot autonomously navigates towards this goal. At this point it has stopped so probably if we come here to the shell we are going to see the following messages. So goal succeeded, yeah reach it, the goal, goal succeeded, okay? This means that uh, it has successfully reached the goal I have set to it. You can keep sending uh, other goals if you want so return it back here, then it's going to compute another path and it's going to uh, keep moving to the new goal, all right? So, so yeah, here we have it. Then uh, one thing that we can check at this point is the following. So let me open a new shell here. And have a look at the command bell topic. So if we run here a ROS2 topic list uh, command, we are going to see all the topics that are available for this simulation. And uh, one of them is the command bell. The command bell, as you might already know, if you have some experience or background in ROS, is the topic uh, that uh, usually it's uh, used in order to send velocity commands to the uh, motor of the robot. So basically, is the topic you said in order to move the robot, send velocities to the robot, okay? So if we have a look, we can have a look at this topic running the following command, ros 2 topic echo command vel. There you go. So at this point, we cannot see anything because no messages are being sent to the, to the robot, okay? But as soon as I set a new goal, let me set a goal uh, here to my robot. I'm going to start seeing velocity commands here being sent to the to the to the robot. Yeah. All right. Let me quickly 
have a look here. Okay. Yeah, so uh, one thing uh, that can be noted is that when... Hello, many people here. Hello, Bayode. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Ruben. Hello and welcome. Anton Tetov also finally got it to work. Okay, yeah, so are you being able here to send goals to the robot? Let me know, please, in the chat if you are being able here to, to send goals to the robot and uh, so you have basically all the navigation working as I am doing uh, here. Ah, finally got to fork and launch Rojek. Okay. So you are here in the Rojek now, Anton? Oh, I see. So there was an issue here in forking the Project for the live workshop in your case. Okay, I see. I see. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully everything everything was solved. So let me let me do a very quick summary here of what we have done so far. Um, not not too much, so don't worry. So first of all, we have launched uh, the Gazebo simulation, of course, by uh, running these two commands in a web shell. Okay, let me close this. Yeah, so in a new web shell, you have to run these two commands, and this is going to actually let me let me let me do everything again from from zero very quickly. Okay, so that you can uh, do it alongside with me. Okay, so let me close everything. I'm going to stop absolutely everything here. There we go. All right. So first of all, let's launch the simulation by opening a new shell. Yeah. In order to open a new shell, you have to click on this first icon here in the bottom left corner. So in this new shell, we are going to run these two commands. First, the source command, and second, the rush to launch command, which is going to start the simulation. Now, um, in order to visualize the simulation, you have to click on this cube-like icon that you can see here. And within, uh, in, this is going to open a gazebo window like this one, where you are going to be able to visualize the gazebo simulation, okay? With the MPO500 robot here. All right, so at this point, I have my simulation up and running. Then the next thing uh, we have done is to start navigation two. So for this, we are going to open a new shell. Let's, we can click here on the plus button. Here we have a new shell, and then we are going to run again these two commands. So first, we source the simulation workspace, and second, we run this other command. Rush to launch Neo Simulation 2 navigation.launch.py. So let me run this command. And then we have to wait a few seconds until Navigation to nodes are start are uh, being started. Okay, there we go. It's just still uh, launching things, as you can see. Then, at some point, which I have already reached, you are going to start seeing these messages uh, here. See, um, like this one. AMCL cannot publish a post or update the transform. Please set the initial post. And the program is going to be stuck here, showing me these messages and ask, asking, asking me to please set a post. As you can see, yeah? Here you have the message, AMCL cannot publish a post or update the transform. Please set the initial post. Then. Once I reach this point, what I, what I have to do is to go to RVs, RVs2, in order to set an initial pose. Then, in order to be able to work uh, or to visualize RVs2, you have to open the graphical tools here with this uh, 
computer-like icon. And then here in this window, you are going to be able to uh, see ARVs. You can maximize it to, uh, to see it properly. And uh, yeah, so here we have our bees. We have our bees with a, uh, an empty and a static map loaded. But uh, things doesn't seem to be right at this point. So basically what we have to do, as the, as the messages were saying, saying, is to set an initial pose. Then how can we set an initial pose here? Well, very easy. We can do it by using the 2D pose estimate tool here that RVs provides. So we can click on this 2D pose estimate uh, button and then set the initial pose of the robot, which actually it's in the center of the map. It's right here with this orientation. Then we set the initial pose of the map, of the robot, sorry. And as soon as we do this, we are going to see that all the cost maps get initialized. Okay, this is looking much better now, right? Then all the cost maps are initialized and you are going to also see that the navigation and localization here are set to active. So the, the status of the navigation and localization changes to active, which is good, okay? Then another thing I have done extra, which uh, all this, uh, until this point, all this is uh, explained here in the notebook. So you can follow the notebook in order to reach this point. Then uh, here I have done an extra, an extra step because uh, as you can see here, we only have the footprint of the robot with the TFs and so on. But uh, in order to properly uh, see the robot, what I have done is to add a, a, another display here. I have added an extra robot model display. And then I have configured this robot model so that instead of this, I can actually see my, uh, my robot, my MPO500 robot in RVs, okay? This is an extra, an extra step, it's not mandatory, okay? Then here you can change the description source from topic to file. And then here in the description file field, you can select the URDF file of the robot, which is inside simulation workspace, Neo Simulation 2, robots, MPO 500, and then MPO 500 WordDF. So I'm going to open this file, and this is going to load here in RVs, uh, actually the, the, the URDF file of my um, MPO robot, which looks much better. Okay, so here I have my robot in RVs. All right, then at this point, everything is active, everything is uh, working, all the navigation to nodes are up, and we can send navigation goals to our robot. So how can we do this? We can do this by using the nav to goal tool that we have here, also in RVs. Yeah? To the pose estimate, it's used in order to set the initial pose of the robot, to tell to the AMCL uh, node, which is the initial pose of our robot. And then we have this nav to goal tool, which we can use in order to send uh, goals to the robot. So basically I'm going to do this right now. Let me set a goal uh, around here. And then we are going to see the path is computed and the robot starts navigating towards the goal. You can see this in RVs and also in the real navigation, in the real simulation, sorry. You can also see how the robot is uh, it's basically moving and navigating autonomously towards this new goal that I have set. All right, it's going, it's, you can see here also the distance remaining, the estimation time, estimated time of arrival. You can keep the progress here. And as you can see here also in the feedback, now it's saying reach it, okay? So the goal, the first goal has been reached. We can send another goal if we want. Let's move it back uh, here. And then it's going to compute the new path and it's going to start uh, navigating towards this new goal. You can see here the distance remaining to the goal, time taken, etc. Okay, yeah, so far so good. Do you all have this setup working? Exactly, very well, Anton Tetov, very well. So very good uh, observation. So actually the robot, it's not uh, currently 
um, behaving as an omnidirectional robot. As you can see, it's behaving more like a car. Okay? That's right. So it's basically performing all these rotations and so on. It's rotating uh, on the place. So for instance, if I, if I send a goal here, it's going to rotate, face this direction, as you can see, then go there, etc. So, so basically, uh, it's not actually behaving like an omnidirectional robot, but actually it's behaving like a differential drive robot. So yeah, you are totally right, Anton. Then, actually, the, 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 the cool thing uh, about... Uh, let, me, let me stop now uh, here, navigation, by the way. So the, 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 the cool thing about omnidirectional robots is that we can apply, as Anton is saying here in the comments, is that we can apply uh, linear velocities in the y-axis. Yeah? So we can basically... Let me, let, let me do a quick demonstration about this using here the... the, the using here the um, teleop twist that I have here. Let me get closer here to the robot. There we are. Okay. So I can move the robot here forward, as you can see. I can move it backward. Okay. I can rotate the robot like this. Okay, but all these are uh, differential drive uh, motions. Yeah, these are motions which uh, any differential drive uh, robot can do. So the particular things about omnidirectional robots is that they have this motion. So they can move, as you can see, like this. They can move on the y axis. Okay? So this is basically what we are going to try to achieve using navigation, okay? You are going to see that it's not perfect, but, uh, but yeah, it can be, it, it can be uh, more or less achieved, okay? Then, um, okay, then let's keep going, let's keep going. So uh, navigation to setup. So basically, what we have done here is to run this navigation.launch.py uh, file, yeah? Then if we come here to the code editor, we can have a look here at this uh, file. Here in the Neo Simulation 2 launch folder, we have this navigation uh, launch pie. Okay, you have the contents also in the notebook. I have put them here so that you can also check them from here. But uh, as you can see, it's super simple. So the, the, the launch file that we are running here, which is starting all the navigation system and everything, it's super, super simple. It's actually super simple, super basic. So what we are doing basically is to call another launch file. So we are calling, we are uh, actually calling and uh, running and starting this launch file, bring up launch.py, which is contained inside um, a ROS2 package, which is named like this, nav to bring up, okay? This, this uh, package, nav to bring up, and this launch file, bring up launch.py, all these files, you are not going to find them here in the workspace because they are already installed in the system. So when you install uh, Navigation 2 with binaries or compiling it from source, whatever, in, in our case, all, all the Navigation 2 packages are, have been installed here using binaries. Yeah, so sudo apt install ROS Galactic Navigation 2. Yeah? Then by uh, uh, installing the binaries, all these packages uh, are automatically installed in the system. Then basically what I am doing from this launch file is to call this uh, launch file, which is installed in the system, and I am providing my own parameters file. Okay? So uh, let's say, uh, le let's summarize it like this. So I am calling uh, a default navigation to launch file 
but I am providing to this launch file my own parameters. Okay, and this launch file is this one. Navigation.yam. This is the this is the parameters file that I am actually loading and sending to this navigation to uh, launch file. Okay? Then within that within this parameters file is where I am going to specify all the parameters related to my robot. Then this parameters file you are going to find it here in the neo simulation to package config folder mpo500 and here you have it navigation.yam so let's open it and here i have all the uh, all the navigation parameters specific to my robot which is the mpo500 so if you are using a different robot then you are going to have to change some of these parameters to adjust them to uh, the robot you are going to use okay but basically the powerful thing uh, here is that we can just call a default launch file from navigation2 which is going to bring up uh, everything all the navigation2 nodes and then we only have to send to this launch file to this default launch file the parameters specific to our robot yeah does it does this make sense all this that I am showing, explaining, does it make sense? Let me know here in the in the in, in the chat if you are understanding what I am saying or not. Yes. Okay. Great. It makes sense. Okay. Excellent. Then uh, you are going to see that uh, in this uh, YAM file we have many many parameters. But basically, the, 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 the most important ones are the ones that are uh, described here in the notebook. So we are loading, uh, we have the AMCL parameters, which are the parameters related to the localization system of the robot. You can see them here, AMCL parameters, all the parameters, we have them here. We are setting uh, things related to the, uh, for instance, we have here one parameter that we are going to review later which is the robot model type, okay? But basically here we are setting uh, all the parameters which are related to the localization system of the uh, robot, okay? We can find also down here the BT navigator, which basically is uh, going to configure the behavior of my robot, yeah? So whenever uh, the robot gets uh, stuck or doesn't know uh, what to do, it's going to come to this BT navigator in order to uh, to ask him what to do, how to behave, and this is man managed uh, using uh, behavior trees, etc. Okay, we are not going to go too deep into all this because it's too much, and this is more uh, other subjects from navigation too. But uh, we have also here the BT navigator parameters, all the plugins, etc. We can find also the controller server which basically are the parameters related to the local uh, path planning system. Okay? We have the local and global COSMAC parameters also. Have them here. Local COSMAC parameters. Global COSMAC parameters. The map server, which basically is in charge of loading the static map. We have the planner server, which it's loading the global planning system. And we have also the recovery server, which is in uh, here we are configuring the recovery behavior system of our robot. Okay. So if you have some experience in uh, navigation, all these things are going to be familiar with you, the recovery behaviors, the coast maps, local planning, global planning. Okay. I'm not going to, to explain all this in this live class because it's not the, the purpose of it, okay? In case you want to, to, to learn more, more about this, just let me remind you that we have in our academy, 
here we have um, one course for ROS2 navigation, okay? ROS2 navigation, here we have it. So uh, in case you want to learn more uh, about all these uh, subjects that I am uh, talking uh, about here, all the, um, the local planning, uh, global planning, cost maps, uh, recovery behaviors, all this is properly explained in the ROS2 navigation course, okay? So in case you want to learn more about this, keep in mind that we have this course uh, here. So, so yeah, basically uh, in this configuration uh, file, we are uh, setting all the parameters related to all the navigation uh, systems that uh, our robot is going to use in order to perform autonomous navigation. All right? Then, um, okay, so we have many parameters here, but let's take a moment and focus on the parameters which actually have something to do with omnidirectional robots. Okay, because many of the parameters that we have here are just used for any robot. Okay, but there are some specific parameters that we have to uh, we have to bear, bear in mind when we are working with holonomic or omnidirectional robots. Okay, the first parameter is this robot model type. So basically, here we are uh, defining. Uh, which type of robot we are working with. Basically, here we have two options. Differential or omnidirectional. Yeah? So, uh, if you are working with an omnidirectional uh, robot, like it is our case, then we should set this parameter to omnidirectional. Okay? This parameter, by the way, it's you can find it here in the IMCL related parameters. Yeah? Here in the IMCL parameters, you are going to find this robot model type differential. Okay, all the parameters that have something to do with um, omnidirectional robots, I have added here a comment so that they are easier to detect for you. Okay, in any case, I'm going to show them now here in the notebook. Uh, yeah, and Tony saying, I've mostly done path planning, trajectory planning for robot arms. Is some similar algorithms using to create cost maps? Or is it something else complete? completely? Yeah, no, co cost maps don't have nothing to do with trajectory planning. Cost maps uh, don't have. But uh, what, what it has to do are the, 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 the global planning system, for instance, the global planning system or the local planning system use algorithms we ha which uh, have many things in common with algorithms that are used for uh, ARM trajectory planning. Okay? So both for uh, robot navigation and for path planning and for uh, trajectory planning for robotic arms, in the background, they are using algorithms which uh, have many things in common, like uh, A star, uh, Jigstra, etc. Okay, but this has nothing to do with uh, with cost maps. Cost maps are a different are a different thing. Okay, so yeah, let's let's keep moving. Um. Okay, so we have also the mean y velocity threshold. So basically, this parameter sets the uh, minimum y velocity. So the controller server filters the velocity messages received before sending them to the controller plugin. So velocity values below this threshold in meters per second will be set to zero. What does this mean? Okay, so this parameter, mean y velocity threshold, you are going to find it coming a little bit down here in the controller server section, okay? Remember that the controller server parameters are the ones related to the local planning system, okay? Then in this controller server, you are going to find this mean y velocity threshold. So what does this mean? This means that any velocities that are be below this 
value, which is quite high, 0.5 meters per second, is a value which is quite high. Okay? So any velocity values that come to this controller, which are below this value, are going to be basically ignored. Okay? So basically it's going to be like uh, our robot is not holonomic, unless, unless it receives values higher than this, which is not very likely. Okay? So, um, yeah, we are going to, to, to see an example of this in a moment. Then, let's keep uh, going with more uh, parameters. We have the maximum uh, velocity, uh, max bell y, which is the maximum velocity in the e-axis, in meters per second, which is the maximum uh, val velocity value allowed for uh, y velocities. The acceleration limit also, which is the maximum uh, acceleration uh, allowed for uh, the y-axis, and the same for the deceleration limit. Okay, so these are just limit values. All of these uh, parameters can also be found here in the controller server. If we go a little bit down, we are going to find them here. Maximum velocity C y. So as we can see, the maximum velocity y allowed here is zero. Okay, so uh, of course it's impossible that our robot is going to move in the y-axis because we have this parameter set to zero. So we are not allowing any y-velocity which is higher than uh, zero. Okay, you can find acceleration limits uh, here for the y-velocities which is also set to zero. We have the by samples which is the number of samples to use when exploring the y-velocity space. Okay? By default here, uh, we have it set to 5, which is a quite uh, low value. Yeah? Uh, if we want to work with uh, y-velocities, we should at least increase the value of the, the y-velocity samples to 20, at least. Okay? And then finally, we have the, uh, the critics here, down here, these critics, which basically uh, are some, uh, some rules, let's say, that we are adding to our uh, local planning system. Okay? In this case, for holonomic robots, we can make use of the twirling rule, as you can see here, which basically prevents holonomic robots from spinning as they make their way to the goal. Yeah? So it's going to try to uh, prevent uh, holonomic robots from spinning, from rotating in, the, in their uh, own z-axis. Okay? We can do this by using the twirling critic. So as, as we can see here, we don't have it by default. We have the list of critics and we don't have the twirling. So we can add this twirling to the list if we want to use it, okay? Then this twirling value also has the scale parameter which can be tuned in order to, uh, in order to modify a little bit the behavior of this, uh, of this role, all right? Then, then let's do one thing. So, what we are going to do now is to modify all these parameters that I have introduced here, which are related to omnidirectional and holonomic robots, and we are going to change them in our parameters file. So we have to change them so that we are going to adapt our uh, parameters file to a holonomic robot. Okay, so let's go by parts. I'm going to, I'm going to, to, to do it uh, with you. So I'm going to start with the robot model, of course, robot model type variable. We have to change it from differential to omnidirectional. Yeah, omnidirectional, first parameter change. Second parameter we are going to uh, go for is this one, minimum y velocity threshold. So we are going to have to lower this parameter. At least we are going to put it at the same level of the x velocity threshold. Okay? 
so that if velocities um, higher than this value come to the controller, they are not going to be ignored. Okay, they are going to be taken into account. All right. Okay, let's keep going down. We have more parameters down here. Next one. Maximum velocity in the y-axis. Of course, we have to increase this. Let's increase it to uh, 0 0.3, for instance. Okay? Next parameter. We have it here. Acceleration limit. We are going to increase the acceleration limit. We are going to put it at the same value as the acceleration limit for the x-axis. Okay? And for the deceleration limit, we are going to also put it at the same value of the x-axis, right? Then we are going to also increase the, uh, B, uh, the uh, y velocity samples to 20. There we go. And we are going to finally also add to the critics rules here, we are going to add the twirling. So let me come here to the to the end. And I'm going to copy it here so that I don't add any typo. I'm going to copy it from here directly. Let me copy it. Control C. And let me add it here to the end of the list. All right. Um, okay, so I have tuned all these parameters. So now, in order to, to test them, I'm going to uh, have to recompile, okay? So let me recompile here. CD simulation workspace. You have also the instructions here in the notebook. We need to recompile so that my new parameter file that I have just updated is installed into the, into the workspace and uh, it's taken into account, okay? Otherwise, it's going to just uh, keep loading the old one. So let me recompile here. It's called Compute. Very important to source the workspace. And then now we can launch here. Again, the navigation system. Oh, sorry, I'm missing here. ROS2, launch, new, simulation 2, and navigation. There we go. Actually, let me, let me restart everything because also the simulation has been running here for a while. So I prefer to have it here started from zero. Everything. Uh, this is not required. Okay, I'm just doing it uh, because I prefer it to restart everything. Okay, there we go. But uh, you don't need to. Um, all right. So let me then run here uh, the navigation system. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So. Um, this is still loading, let's wait. Here it's still loading things, as you can see. Okay, so now it's already uh, asking me to provide an initial position, so let's do it. Let's provide the initial post to the AMCL node. There we go, it's around here. Okay, let me go. Let me add again the robot model here so that I can see it better. Description source file and description file. I'm going to update it also. Workspace robots MPO 500. There we go. Okay. Then um, yeah, so everything is loaded, right? Okay. So my robot is ready to receive now goals. So let's send one goal. Actually, let me do one thing and let me. Uh, do an echo to the command bell topic again to see what velocities are being sent to the robot. ROS2 topic echo command bell. OK, 
Okay, so no velocities uh, at this moment. Then let's set here a new goal. Let me set a goal around here. And we can see the robot is still rotating. So it's not actually, let, let's have a look here. Yeah, so the e-velocities being sent are still very low. For this goal still. So we should tune a little bit more these parameters. Let's try se sending different goals in any case. Okay, let me come here and send a goal which is stands around here. Yeah, but here we can see the lateral movement already. Can you see there? So it's performing already some lateral movement. Yeah. See, here we are already sending some velocities in the i-axis. And the robot is doing some kind of lateral movement already. Okay. There we go. It's going to reach the current goal. I'm going to send a new one now. Okay, it has reached the goal. Let's send another one which is around here, for instance. Okay, it's still performing uh, too much rotation, okay? So the thing to, uh, what I would suggest for you now is to tune a little bit the parameters here, so as you can see here, the parameters are too low, so we should tune a little bit here this parameter, okay? The one I have added here in the notebook, this one here, the scale option, which is basically the weight of the rotation, okay? So we should increase the weight of the rotation here in order to uh, make uh, make it uh, more painful for the robot to perform rotations, okay? So I suggest that uh, I suggest that you now, uh, after this lifecard, because we are already seven minutes past the limit time, so I suggest that you now play with all these parameters that I have introduced in order to make it twirling scale exactly, in order to make it uh, behave more and uh, decrease their rotation, okay? So, let's send another one. So as you can see, it's still uh, rotating quite a lot. It shouldn't. So if we send a goal around here, we can see that it's already doing some lateral movement. Here you can see it very clearly, how it's doing lateral movement, but still it's performing some rotation, okay? So we should try to decrease this rotation and uh, make it move more using the Y value in the twist. Okay, so so yeah, let's go, let's uh, let's finish it here. Well, any questions? Anything? Let me stop all here. Any questions so far? Is it more or less clear? Okay, so now you, of course uh, the lifecycle is going to finish. We are already almost 10 minutes past the limit time. Life class is going to finish, but you can keep working on this project. You are going to have it on your workspace forever. As I have said at the beginning also, you can uh, try with different simulations. So here in the, in the um, launch file for the simulation, which is this one, simulation.launch.py, you can change the robot you are loading. You have the robots available here in the robots folder. You can switch to a different type of robot. MPO 700, which is also holonomic. You can change to a differential robot, for instance. You can also change the world. So in this case, we have the, the we are using the Neo Track 1, but you have other worlds available, as you can see here. You can change all this here in the simulation launch file by changing this, uh, these parameters here, okay? So you can play, you can keep working with this, and uh, uh, I really encourage you to do so. All right? So, no questions at this point. Very interesting. All right. Uh, thank you, Daniel. So, so yeah, let me uh, switch very quickly here.
Ok, here I'm back, I'm back, ok Ok, yes, yeah, so um, So yeah, thank you very much for being here with me on this uh, live class We are going to have next live class on uh, next uh, Tuesday So don't miss it, we are going to, to be back with uh, live classes every week, every Tuesday Bringing different content and uh, interesting content So I hope you have enjoyed it today's live class um, and yeah i'm going to see you uh, next week until then as always take care and keep pushing your ross learning bye bye